What's doing, everybody? I'm Alec Lace. Thank you for watching First Class Fatherhood. Today's guest on the podcast is Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Lee Goldberg. Lee Goldberg has been forecasting the weather since the early 90s. In my opinion, he is the best-dressed dad on TV. It's an honor to have him on the podcast. So get down there and tap the subscribe button, hit the like, and let's jump into it right now with Lee Goldberg on First Class Fatherhood. Joining me now, First Class Father, Lee Goldberg. Welcome to First Class Fatherhood. Uh, it's really nice to be here. Thanks for having me. All right, let's kick it off like this. How many kids do you have and how old are they? I have two kids. Emily is 20 and Ethan is 18. We're just about to be empty nesters uh, headed into the fall for the first time. Wow, awesome. Yeah, my oldest is heading into high school for the first time. I got four kids myself. My youngest is in Emily. She's our only girl. So, uh, Oh, my goodness. Cool. Yeah, what, what type great. of what, what type of sports or activities are they into? Uh, Ethan ran cross country all through high school. Um, Emily is a hiker. Uh, she's just outdoor adventurer. That's what she loves to do is hike. Okay, awesome. If you could, Lee, just take a minute here to hit my listeners with a little bit about your background and what you do. Okay, uh, I am the chief meteorologist at WABC TV in New York City. Um, I uh, have been kind of a weather geek since I was a little kid. I uh, grew up in the Boston area, so it was nor'easters and um, hurricanes, and I just, I love the idea of being able to be able to forecast something that helped everybody prepare and, and in their everyday life, and it just fascinated me, and then the science and everything came after it. I just, I loved it, so I, I made my own weather station when I was a little kid. My dad put something on the house where, where I could have all my instruments mounted down in the basement, and it just took off from there. That's what I studied in college at Cornell, and I uh, started working, started my career in Syracuse, New York, and, and came to New York City 25 years ago. Yeah, awesome, Lee. And, and I've been watching you for years, and your passion for weather really comes through uh, uh, on your uh, forecasts and everything. So it's awesome to watch you. And, and along this journey then, Lee, about how old were you then when you first became a dad, and how did becoming a father kind of change your perspective on life? Okay, as I first became a dad, um, let's see, I, I married my, my middle school sweetheart. Jess and I went to... Uh, I mean, we were actually next to each other in a nursery school picture, so I guess that's my soulmate. Um, we just we just celebrated our 22nd uh, wedding anniversary, and Emily's 20. All right, so I so I was 27 when we had our first child in New York City. Lived in the city for about nine months, Upper West Side near the uh, station, and then we moved to the suburbs, uh, a little closer to family in Boston. So we moved north, and. Um, well, it changes your whole perspective. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, your priorities go from it's all about me to it's all about them. And and, and that's what it's been ever since. And, uh, you know, see how the family evolves over the years and, you know, the challenges you face, and especially in a time like this, how you come together. It's uh, it's an incredible evolution, ups and downs and all around. Yeah, well said. Yeah, one of the best things I think, I mean, one of the silver linings here for the pandemic has been the fact that my family, we've all been together and I'm really enjoying the family time that we've had. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Uh, and what, what would you say about uh, as far as discipline goes, Lee? What type of disciplinarian are you as a dad? And is it different than the discipline style that you grew up with? Um, you know, I, I, I'm probably on the tougher side. Um, my wife and I complement each other really well um, in, in the way that we discipline. Um, but we run a pretty tight ship, um, like even, you know, even as I've seen during the pandemic, you know, we're probably a little bit more on the on the strict side with the way that we're regulating, you know, what the kids have done, kind of the last to maybe allow group meetings and, and so forth. Um, but uh, what's major on our uh, priority list is just consideration. And, and maybe we've even set the bar sometimes too high for other people in our lives with that. Um, and that's rubbed off on the kids. So um, we're, we're not as forgiving as maybe we should be. But we try to be like absolutely uber considerate of everybody. Just, you know, when you're around people, whether it's their personal space or your interactions with them. Just always put yourselves in their shoes and, um, and, and you know, be thankful. And uh, it's, um, that, that's really important to us. And I think so far they've, they've, they've uh, fallen the lead. Yeah, good stuff. And, and as I said, my, my oldest is about to hit high school here. So I'm just about to get into all the fun stuff of driving, dating, and all this other stuff. So I'm kind of curious, how did you kind of handle it with your kids when it came time to hit that dating scene? Oh, to hit the dating scene. Wow. Okay, so for so. It, it was first Emily, obviously. <laughs> um, so it was just about um, 
you know, she initially when she was a, a little kid, she was more of a follower. And I think she, but she was an observer for a long time. And then like sort of a strength kind of swelled through her. And so I, I, I sort of tapped into that and just said, you know, you're a strong young woman and that's just how I want you to make sure that, that you proceed in, in your relationships. You know, um, you don't have to be, uh, let the other person drive things. You know, you make sure you're comfortable with everything. Um, try to have a balance. In other words, you know, I mean, I, I know you can go boyfriend, girlfriend crazy. I certainly did it with my wife growing up. Um, but she's, it's kind of actually unusual to me. It's been sort of very balanced. So I just, I tried to just make sure that she always thought about herself and not that it was, you know, she and this boyfriend, she, that it was always, you know, the two of them, it was you know her first and then, you know, let things go down from there. But, you know, in terms of Ethan, it's just, I, it's funny and, and I shouldn't, maybe, maybe it's sexist the way you do it, but you know, your initial thought growing up as a teenage boy and seeing a teenage boy, it's like, you just make sure you're respectful. You treat her just like you would treat mom, you know, that whole thing. Yeah, I, I'm hoping, like I said, my Emily is only six. I'm already dreading them days, but I'm hoping my three boys will season me enough so I get prepared for when she hits the scene <laughs> out there. So, uh, Well, you'll, no, you know, you'll see in preschool, even if a little guy comes up to your daughter, you would be like, hey there, wait a second. You got to deal with me first. <laughs> Uh, and, and listen, you're obviously, listen, you're, you're definitely one of the best dressed newsmen, uh, you know, on the broadcasts there. So yeah, I know you do the, um, the AccuTire. I always love those posts that you put up on Instagram. Do you, ha do you have like a, 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 you get any advertisements out of that? Is that a thing or is that just something personal that you do or, uh, would you have a favorite suit that you wear? So I have a brother. So I'm my mother's daughter when it comes to that. She was always with the clothes and everything. Her, my grandfather was a dressmaker, a tailor. Um, so I've always been into that. And I found when I, my gift to myself, when I got the job in New York back in 96 was to go and get a custom made suit, which is, it's a little bit more uh, widespread now, you know, you could go to what different shops and they do made to measure. Sorry, you might hear some weeding going on in the background, but, um, I met a guy on the Upper East Side. We've kind of grown up together and it, he makes all my suit shirts and ties and then, we go through swatches and, and I just, I like to put it together. Everybody always comments, Oh, uh, uh, thank your wife for putting it together. And no, that's not the case. I'm, I'm very into it. <laughs> awesome. And you know, a, a lot of things have changed now, obviously in the meteorologist world, as they have everywhere else, the way that we, you know, you guys find out and forecast weather and stuff and the way to become uh, a news person or uh, a meteorologist has changed. So what type of advice do you have out there for the parent whose, whose kid is interested in a career in meteorology, which route should they take? Well, it's a it's an incredible industry right now. It's a growing industry. The broadcast part of it is, is very challenging. Um, uh, the television industry has changed quite a bit, but in terms of the way people consume weather, there is you know endless opportunities. You know, my parents it was a sort of unorthodox profession to try to go into when I was growing up. Uh, my parents were very supportive about it, so I tell parents to. You know, if, if their kids are showing a passion for this and, and you'll even hear a lot of adults will come up to me like, oh, I always wanted to do that. But I ended up doing something a little safer, maybe a little bit more mainstream. You know, if they have a passion for it, let them follow it. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, whether it's now online or different, just so many amateur forecasters, make sure they get their degree. It's so critical. A um, lot of great schools out there. And whether it's broadcast or government or private industry, a lot of great opportunities. And with the era that we're in and sort of supercharged weather, uh, we need great scientists. So it's so important that we have the next generation come up. Yeah, right on with that. And then you've covered so many different storms uh, over your career here. Is there any one in particular that was the, the most challenging storm for you to cover where you were out there in the middle of it? Uh, Superstorm Sandy by far, uh, you know, because so we're talking 2012. Um, I mean, I've been in the market a long time and covered blizzards and in some brushes with tropical systems. But to go on air, especially the night before, and, and we play that video a lot in some promotions that I've never had that tone before the night before knowing what this storm could do to the tri-state area, the biggest natural disaster that was going to happen to to the New York City metro area. So that was by far the most challenging and, and sort of long term coverage I've ever done. Yeah, it's amazing that that's eight years ago already because it's still see it's still fresh. Even I'm I'm down here in Middletown by the uh, you know by the Jersey Shore and it's, it was just devastated yeah. down here and your after effects are still lingering around and it's uh, it's amazing. So, um, yeah. wait, do your kids do they watch you uh, forecast the weather? Are they into that at all or are they kind of grown old on them by now? You know, it's it's certainly not as. Um 
yeah, if it's not the novelty that it was, uh, you know, now they haven't been to the studio in so long. They used to come to the studio a lot when they were little kids. They'd hide under the newscast, uh, under the news desk during one of the casts. It was really fun. Um, but now I've been broadcasting from home. So, you know, I'm out on the back deck doing backyard weather. They're coming in and out. So I still think there's something special about it to them. Um, and you know, it, it, it is a special thing for the family too. Sometimes whether I can post about an anniversary or their accomplishments, there's a lot of feedback and, and really kind words from our viewers. So I think there's always something special about it. Yeah. And you mentioned there, you're getting ready to be an empty nester there. What kind of, uh, what kind of goals or plans do you have here for yourself for the future? Well, it kind of shifted a lot because initially I thought my wife and I'd be on the move and, you know, some three-day weekends and get out of town a little bit. So now we have to sort of revise that. Um, so I, I think we'll do a little bit more skiing. We'll do some road trips. Um, like a lot of people, we've done a lot of home improvement during this. Um, but the great thing is we get a lot of history to lean back on being together so long. So we enjoy each other a lot. So even if it's just you know, walking in Cold Spring or Kent, Connecticut or some of the nice towns around the area. I mean, we have a great time together. So uh, I'm sure we'll find something. <laughs> awesome. All right, last thing I want to hit you with here, Lee, I love to ask all the dads that I get on the podcast, what type of advice do you have for the new dad or for that about-to-be father who's out there listening? Hmm. Wow. Uh, I'm going to think about it. Just... Uh, Give them the time. Keep your ears open. Always listen. You know, I think it's so easy for us, especially with the way that we're all working remotely. You know, we all have to respond to our email. It seems like immediately uh, it's easy to tune out some of the special little statements that your kids will be making, even in the early times. So don't miss those moments. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I'm, I'm preaching something that I'm still working on today, which is being in the moment. So. Do your best to do that because, um, you know, th this stuff is so precious and all the other stuff will come and go. Uh, but you have this window and you think, OK, you know, little babies, 18 years. And, and here I am, an empty nester. And I can't I, I don't know how it's all happened. Um, but uh, just try to keep as focused as you can on the present. Yeah, well said. Love the message. It's been an honor for me. I got to say, Lee Goldberg, you're a first class father all the way. And thank you so much for giving me a few minutes of your time here on First Class Fatherhood. Thanks to adding me to your elite list. That really was a pleasure and a pleasure meeting you too.